Welcome back to part two of our video tutorial series where we're learning how to draw a landscape scene in Adobe Illustrator. In the first video, we got as far as drawing the sky and this mountain range. What we're going to be adding in this video are the night sky objects. So the stars, the moon, we might even throw in some wispy clouds, which I haven't got on this example. And we'll put the silhouette of this bird against the moon as well. Okay, so to get started, we might begin with the easiest thing, which is the moon. So go and grab your ellipse tool from your toolbox down the left hand side. And in your properties panel, actually turn the stroke off and your fill color should either be white or something fairly close to white. A tinge of yellow doesn't hurt. And I want you to just hold shift and draw yourself a reasonably large moon onto the backdrop there. Now, once you've got that moon um, in your page there, go and rename the layer to moon. And I want you to put a glow around the outside of this moon now by simply going to the effect menu at the top. Actually, make sure the moon's selected first. Go to the effect menu, go down to stylize and choose the outer glow effect. Now, this little box will come up asking you uh, what you want the glow to look like. I generally, generally change the mode to normal. Change the color here from black to white. Uh, the opacity is pretty good at 75% and we can probably bump the blur up to either uh, I reckon about 15 or 20%. 20% probably doesn't look too bad. So I'm going to go with those settings. Normal for the blend mode, white for the glow color, 75% opacity and 20 pixel blur. Then I'll click on OK. Alright, now I'm going to grab that moon layer and just drag it below all the mountain layers but still above the sky. And that just puts it behind the mountains now. So just move your moon around and look for a good spot for it to sit. Um, so it looks like it's rising up from behind the mountains. I reckon that looks pretty good over there on the left hand side. Alright, so that's the moon done. You can lock that into place. And we're going to have a look at putting the stars in the sky now. So to do the stars, um, we're going to grab the ellipse tool again. We're just going to hold shift and draw just a small circle for now. Okay, now I'm going to stick with the same color I've got for the moon, but if you want to change it to like a, a pure white or something similar to that, by all means go for it. Uh, it doesn't really matter though, because we're going to fade these into the sky in a moment anyway. Now once you've got your circle drawn, go up to your effect menu, and this time we're going to go to distort and transform and choose the pucker and bloat effect. And we're going to pull this lever into the negatives towards the pucker side of things. And I'm going to go somewhere around minus 80 to minus 90. You'll see the effect you get. I reckon about minus 80, minus 85 might look good. We'll click on OK. You can see now we've got this circle that has been transformed to look like a bit of a star. Now that's way too big for my liking. So what I'm going to do is make this really small. We might need to zoom in just so we can get small enough. Zoom back. That's not too bad. I could probably go even a tiny bit smaller. All right, so I know it looks very small, but that little white dot is as big as I want my stars to be. Okay, now what we're going to do, instead of copying and pasting that a whole heap of times, put stars in the sky, I am going to paint the stars on using the paintbrush tool. So we're going to turn this little shape here into a paintbrush or into a brush head. So go to your window menu and select your brushes panel. Here's mine over here on the right. Pick up that little shape and drag it and drop it into your brush panel. And a box will come up saying you're about to make a new brush. We want it to be a scatter brush, so make sure you've selected that option and click on OK. And this next box will come up with a few options um, that we can choose for our brush. So I'm going to call this one Star Brush. And we're going to change all of these, the size, the spacing, the scatter and rotation from fixed to random. We're basically going to scatter these stars across the sky in random locations. Um, so what we're going to do, first of all, is adjust the size. Now for the size of the stars, I don't mind if they're going a little bit smaller than what they currently are, maybe about half the size of what they currently are, which would be 50%. I don't want them any bigger than what they currently are though, so I'm going to leave that maximum value at 100%. So the stars, when I scatter them on, will be scattered either um, anywhere between 50 and 100% of its current size. Now for the spacing, um, I don't want them too close together, so I'm going to turn both these levers up around, I guess, 500 to start with, and up around the nine, eight or 900 mark um, for that right one, for the maximum value. 
For the scatter, just pull it a little bit to the left and then a little bit to the right. And for the rotation, just pull your left lever all the way to the left and your right lever all the way to the right. That means they can do a full 360 degree turn as we scatter them on the page. So they'll be rotated in all sorts of different um, directions. Click OK when you're done. Now, as you scatter these um, stars across the sky, if you're not happy with them, double click back over here in your brushes panel on the star brush and you can re-edit those options. Okay, so just keep that in mind. So what I'm going to do now is just delete those stars that are on my page for now. And I'm going to grab my paintbrush tool. And with the star selected, simply draw yourself a line through the sky. And you'll see some stars start to appear. doesn't matter if you go outside the artboard. We're going to chop all those ones off a little bit later on. Don't go too crazy. You don't want too many stars. Um, I'm probably going a little bit overboard, but you get the idea. Something like that will look pretty good. Okay. Next job. Once you've got those stars scattered across the page, is to select them all. Now, if you look in your Layers panel over here, let me just open him up. We've got all the mountains and the moon and the sky down the bottom there all locked into place. The ones that are unlocked, all these paths, are just the stars. So if I press Control a it should highlight all the stars. And you can see that over here with the little blue icon that's appeared on the Layers panel, showing that all the paths have been selected. If I press Control g that will group them all together into a group, and I can rename that in my Layers panel to Stars. Let's put that back down there for Layers. Okay, so I've now got a Stars layer, and I'm going to go to my Properties, and I'm going to adjust the opacity of the stars to about half of what they currently are, to 50%. So they kind of fade off into the sky. They don't really stand out too much. Alright, so that's how we add the stars into the sky. Final element we want to put up there is the clouds. Now the clouds, they don't need to be anything special, just one or two here and there. And I'm going to do that by simply, actually, before I do that, I'll need to lock the stars layer, and then I'll draw a circle onto the page. Hold shift while you do it. Now you may need to turn that stroke off, turn the fill back on. I'm going to change that color back to pure white. And I'm just going to duplicate this by either copying and pasting it, so Control c and Control v Or you can hold Alt and just click and drag off one of them circles. Alright, and you can have a little cloud, something like that, up in the sky. Now what I'm going to do next is just highlight those four circles that I've just drawn. And I want to join them together. So in my Pathfinder panel, which is over here, in my Properties, you can also go to Window and get the Pathfinder panel up. We just want to choose the first option, which is the Unite option, which joins all those four circles together to make one big shape. Now, if we were to leave our cloud like that in the sky, I think it looks a bit awkward. Uh, I feel like it needs to be faded out a little bit with those stars. So if you click on it, let's do a few things here. I'm going to go to Effect first of all and blur that cloud with the Gaussian Blur effect. Uh, about 5 pixels is a good size blur, so click on OK there. You can see it's starting to become a bit softer. And if we drop the opacity down, um, try 50% like the stars. Whoops. You can see now we've got a cloud fading off there in the distance. So that's not too bad. And it's probably a little bit big, so I'm going to make it a bit smaller. I don't want this to stand out very much. There you go, just something simple like that. And you can duplicate it. Um, if you want, oops, that didn't duplicate, that did. And just deform them a little bit um, so they look different from one another. But they are basically the clouds um, that you want to have in the sky. Nothing too much going on there. All right, so the final thing I want to put in now is the bird flying across the moon there. So we've got the silhouette of the bird. And to do that, what I'm going to do is trace this bird here. I just got onto Google Images and found a random picture. I'm just going to trace the outline of it very quickly and then color it in black. So we've got a silhouette of a bird. So you need to open this image up in Illustrator. I'll just do that now. If you're familiar with the pen tool, by all means go ahead and start tracing this. But if you'd like to see what I do, then watch along. Um, I'm going to do this very quickly. I'm not going to worry about the intricate details of each of those feathers. I'm just going to do a quick outline of this bird. So I need to just check my layers there and make sure... Um, that bird is locked. I'm going to draw on top of it. 
I'm going to turn my fill color off and I'm going to turn on a bright colored stroke. Um, go for a bright pink, I reckon. And I just turn the size up to two point as well, just so it's a little bit thicker. We can start drawing this bird. So I might start at the top here on the wing. And it's going to come straight down here. I'm just clicking. And if you know how to do curves, by all means, go for it. All right, so there you have it. I've finished tracing that bird now. I'm just going to hide it for a sec so you can see what it looks like. It doesn't need to be anything too fancy because it's going to be pretty small. So I know this wing does look funny, but watch when I resize it, it might be an issue. So highlight that bird and just change the fill to black and turn that stroke off. And it's a simple copy and paste job over to your artwork. Alright, so just resize him so he's nice and small. If you want to give him a bit of an angle. And there you have a little bird there flying across the face of the moon. Okay, so they're basically all the night sky elements that I want to include in this image for now. I'm going to stop the video here and I'll see you in part three in just a moment where we'll get things finished off.